guys, it's Megan, and today I'm back with another 5 ways to fill your sketchbook video. Today's video is super special because all of the ideas were suggested by you guys. Before we get into it, I wanted to take a minute to thank today's video sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with over 25,000 classes in art, design, animation, and more. At less than $10 per month, Skillshare is super affordable. But for a limited time, the first 500 people to click the link in the description will get a free two-month trial of Skillshare Premium, which provides unlimited access to everything on the site. I made the intro to this video after taking a class called Animate 2D Lip Syncing, Flip a Clip on iPad by Ali Animations. So what are you waiting for? Join the more than 7 million creators learning with Skillshare today. With all that being said, let's get into the sketchbook ideas. The first idea comes from Abby, and she said to draw characters in a different time that they were designed for. For example, a modern Cinderella. While I love the Disney idea, I know that so many people have drawn modern Disney princesses before, so I decided to take it in a little bit of a different direction and draw a modern day Wednesday Addams. I based this version of Wednesday Addams from the movie versions from the 90s. In the photo that I referenced, she's wearing a blue floral dress with a white collar. I kept her face and her hairstyle pretty much the same because those are the iconic defining features of Wednesday Addams. But for the outfit, I changed it up a little bit. I gave her a crop top and a tennis skirt, some Doc Martens, and a choker. I actually really like how this drawing ended up turning out. I colored the hair a little bit differently than I normally would, and I think that it worked okay. I looked at the photo, and then I actually looked where the light was coming from, and where the light hit her hair, I put some gray instead of black, and then I colored the rest of it black. And I think that really helped. It kind of, you know, it turned out okay. Except the hand. That's a little, um questionable, but it's fine. For the sweatshirt, I referenced a picture from the Adidas website, but in that picture, it didn't show the girl's legs, so I took a picture of my own legs to use as a reference. I didn't use any references for the skirt or the boots because it kind of would have been pointless. I mean, I do have Doc Martens, so I guess I could have worn them in my reference picture, but I was too lazy to do that, so... I just drew them from my mind. To finish off the page, I wrote the words, I am smiling, because that honestly just perfectly describes Wednesday Addams. I just saw a trailer for a new Addams Family movie. It's like CGI animated, and I think that it looks pretty good. But anyways, here's how the finished drawing turned out. The second idea comes from someone named Sugar Cookie, and they said to go on Google and find some kind of random letter generator, and then draw everything on the page that starts with that letter. I picked the letter M because that's the first letter in my name. I drew a big letter M, and then I drew the things that started with M inside of it. Some of these I got from just typing things that start with M in Google, then some of them I just kind of thought of on my own. So we have Megan from Drake and Josh, Mike Wazowski, or a monster, either way, they both start with M, a monkey, a mug, Mickey Mouse, a minion, makeup, Moto Moto, a marker, a magazine, milk, the moon, a mandala, a mermaid, and Minnie Mouse. I colored in each drawing with a combination of my Windsor & Newton Pro markers and my Arteza markers that I just got and I just did a review on, so make sure to check that video out if you're interested. I am a 100% self-taught artist. I feel like you guys could probably tell that because obviously I'm not super professional. And I've been using alcohol-based markers for about a year off and on, but I only just recently started watching tutorials for how to use them, which I don't know why it took me this long, but here we are. Conveniently, Skillshare has quite a few classes on how to use alcohol-based markers, and there are a lot of free tutorials on YouTube as well. A Skillshare course that I found really helpful was called Markers 101, the Basics and Step-by-Step -step Sketching by Julia Henza. She emphasized making sure that all of your strokes go in the same direction, and I still kind of struggle with that, as you can see. This drawing was actually before I took her course, but the amazing thing about having a YouTube channel and being able to do art is that I can improve. This Moto Moto drawing was really interesting because I didn't have exactly the right colors, so I just did what I could and then I used a pencil to add texture because Moto Moto is very textured. It's not perfect, honestly none of my drawings are, but in the end you could tell what it was, so that's a plus. 
I also did this cartoon slash chibi type mermaid because there wasn't enough room for a full mermaid. I filled in around the M with a pink watercolor that we're just gonna call magenta because I tried to think of a color that started with M and that's the only one I could think of. This really reminds me of this art that I used to have in my room when I was little and they make each letter of your name out of something that starts with that letter. On the one that I had, the M was a mouse, the E was an elephant, G was a goose, A was an apple, and N was a necklace. It might be fun to do one of these for each letter in your name. The next idea comes from Isabella, and she gave me three different ideas, but I decided to go with draw a game. For this page, I decided to create my own game, and it's a drawing game. The idea of this game is that you have a dice and you roll the dice to determine the features of your character. As you can see, I didn't have room to draw six different hairstyles, so to fix this, I decided to give two options for the curly and straight hair. For example, for curly hair, if you get a one, it would be short curly hair, two, it would be long curly hair, and then for straight hair, if you get a three, it's short, and if you get a four, it's long. If you get a five, you can draw a bun, and if you get a six, you draw space buns. In this game, you roll the dice a total of four times. The first one decides the hairstyle. The second turn decides the hair color, the third turn decides the eye color, and the fourth turn decides the shape of the mouth. I think that this is a really fun page to do. If you're ever stuck for ideas, you can just roll the dice and create your own character. You could switch up the categories too to maybe include more typically male hairstyles. And I knew that if I did this, I would inevitably get comments that said, oh, but I don't have a dice. Well. I got you covered. To make your own dice, you're going to need a piece of cardstock. This would work with normal paper too, so if you don't have cardstock, don't worry about it. You're going to want to draw three one inch squares, and below that, three more one inch squares to make it look like a T shape. Then we'll need to add tabs. I added tabs on each side of the square in the middle. I put tabs on both ends of the top part of the T. And finally, another tab on the bottom part of the T. Lastly, I added numbers to each of the squares and then I cut this piece out. To finish the dice, make a fold on each of the lines that you drew, put glue on each of the tabs, and then fold the dice up into a cube. Here's an example of how to play the game. First, roll the dice. The first number that you get determines the hairstyle. The second number determines the hair color. The third number determines the eye color and the fourth determines the mouth. I got the numbers 6, 1, 6, 1. That meant that I had to draw a girl with space buns, blonde hair, brown eyes, and a open mouth smile. I decided to make her hair slightly wavy because I need to practice on drawing curly hair. This was completely unintentional, but I think that this ended up looking kind of like Ruby Rose Turner a little bit. I ended up drawing three girls. The second girl had the combination five, five, two, three, and the third girl had the combination three, two, three, four. One of my goals in my new sketchbook is to use the front and back of all the pages. For the page on the left, I cut out some patterns from a background of an ad in a magazine. I really love making collages, and this is a great way to use the backs of sketchbook pages when the marker bleeds through. I cut out all of the drawings that I did on a separate sheet of paper, and then I glued down the background. After that, I glued down the drawings that I did on top of the background, and I added a few stickers just because I thought it would look nice. And here's how the finished page turned out. If you decide to play this game, make sure to tag me on Instagram. The next idea comes from Alice, and she said, To collect items of one color and then fill your sketchbook with that, creating a design that sort of ties everything into one drawing. For example, my color is yellow, and I have a pineapple, a pair of shoes, and some gloves. Out of that, I made a pineapple wearing shoes and gloves. I chose the color purple, and I chose this octopus squishy, which in real life it looks purple, but on the screen it looks pink. These fairy wings that I bought for a project, but I never used. This witch hat, which again, bought for a project, never used it. A Crayola washable marker, and this purple notebook. I decided to draw an octopus wearing a witch hat, and the octopus has wings, and it is writing in a journal. I tried to make the octopus a combination of pink and purple, but my purple Winsor & Newton Pro marker officially died in this episode, so rip, but it did give it kind of a cool texture. 
I used a purple watercolor to fill in the wings, and I'm just using the cheap Crayola watercolors that are about 6 or $7. And I added the silver detailing onto the wings using a dotting tool and some silver acrylic paint. I decided that my octopus friend looked a little bit lonely on this page just by himself, so I decided to do a watercolor background. I honestly don't know if this made it look better or worse, but I can't really take it back now. The last idea comes from Carlos, and he said to take a quote and draw it. I decided to use this quote that I cut out of a magazine. It says, There are mystical, magical moments when an idea that is fully formed just pops into your head. I really liked this quote, and I thought that it was pretty relatable. It's always such a good feeling when you have a really good idea and then it works out, although sometimes I think I have a really good idea and then nobody wants to watch it. But anyways, I just decided to draw a light bulb, which I know, very cliche, very predictable, but that's what I did. I filled the light bulb in with some mandala designs using my yellow Arteza fine liner. I kind of wish that I would have just colored the light bulb a solid yellow, and you'll see why in a minute. I've been obsessed with filling things with mandala designs ever since I got these fine liners though, and I do think that it's a really cool way to color things in. I filled in the background with a bunch of random dots, swirls, and zigzag lines using my Posca pens. I don't really know what I was going for with this, it looks like a very 90s design, and I think that the page would have worked a lot better if I had just colored the light bulb a solid yellow. But anyways, once the background designs were done, I just glued on the quote with a glue stick. And here's how the finished page turned out. Here are today's shoutouts. If you want a shoutout in my next video, make sure to sign up for Skillshare using the link in the description. Remember that the first 500 people get a free two-month trial of Skillshare Premium. So thank you guys so, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And as always, make sure to subscribe for more videos just like this one. And make sure to follow me on Instagram. It is at WellerMegs. And yeah, I love you guys so, so much. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye!